Um, so welcome back to kindergarten. I'm just kidding. This isn't kindergarten. It might seem like it because right now we're going to start discussing um, the alphabet. But not the English alphabet, but rather the Greek alphabet. Um, it might seem kind of weird that why am I discussing the Greek alphabet here, but it's really important that we do so because we're going to encounter a lot of these symbols um, as we progress through the video series. Um, and the answer, uh, the reason why for that is because when we'll be doing a lot of quantum mechanical problems, there'll be a lot of variables to keep track of. So one way to do that is by introducing um, a systematic record keeping technique. Um, so the systematic way to do that is by um, assigning different Greek alphabets to each variable we'll, we'll be looking at. I mean, we could do it by plain English alphabets, but don't blame me. This is how the physicists and the chemists do it. So let's go right ahead and look at the Greek alphabet so that we can understand all of the various um, variables that we'll be looking at in the future um, and we kind of know where those symbols come from. Uh, I don't want the symbols to seem like an alien foreign language so it's better to kind of see this um, video once so that you can see all the different types of Greek alphabet and the different symbols that they have going on. So just like the English alphabet, there's capital letters and then there's lowercase letters. There's uppercase letters and lowercase letters. So I'll quickly go over this um, and then the rest you could do this in your free time um, and try to memorize all of these symbols. They're not hard to do. So alpha here is just capital A for the capital version and for the lower version it's the alpha that we're used to seeing. Beta here looks like this. Gamma here looks like this. Um, Capital delta looks like a triangle, whereas small delta looks like this weird shape. Um, and this is also referred to as del, okay? Sometimes we'll, we'll call this del. Um, for partial differentials, we usually use, um, sorry, that's not true. Del is a different symbol, my bad. This is delta. Del is this symbol right over here. This is called del. Um, and it derives from delta, so also know this symbol as well. We use this to represent partial differentials. Okay, so epsilon is just written as a capital E. The lowercase version, some people write like this, others write it like that, but they're both epsilon. Zeta, we'll be looking at um, when we talk about atomic orbitals, specifically um, Slater-like orbitals, they're given this fancy symbol of um, lowercase zeta. Now, eta, capital eta is represented by H, and small eta is represented by this symbol. Um, you might have encountered it before. This is the symbol for viscosity of a fluid. Theta, capital theta is just a circle with an H inside of it, a small theta we've seen a million times before. Iota, capital I looks like capital I, small iota looks like a small I without the dot. Now kappa, capital K, and then small k. Lambda looks like this, and small lambda we're used to seeing quite a bit. Mu, um, just the uppercase mu is the capital M. A smaller case mu is just a U with a pronounced um, dash by it, or a or pronounced kind of, I don't know what this thing is called, but a pronounced this thing. Now nu, the capital nu is just a capital N, um, and a small nu looks like this. Now you have to keep the, the difference in mind for nu and upsilon, okay? Nu is a very sharp kind of V, whereas an upsilon is kind of um, a curved V, okay? Now, chi, or key, a key here, uh, the capital key looks like this weird symbol that looks like, I don't even know what, looks like a sandwich almost, and small chi looks rather pretty, like a weird fancy looking um, capital E. Omicron looks like a capital O and a small O. There's nothing hard about Omicron. Capital Pi is just a big pi, and a small pi is just the pi that we're used to seeing. 
capital rho is just a p and a small rho is this, usually we see this as density. Okay, and pi we usually see as 3.14, that, that magical number. Now capital sigma is this sum sign, small sigma is this guy. Um, you see it in Steven Weinbach's law. Um, but anyways, there it is. Tau, capital tau is just a T, and small tau is this guy, which usually represents torque. We've seen that before in, when we discussed torque, or when you've discussed torque in your previous lessons. Um, upsilon, capital upsilon looks like a really big gamma. Small upsilon looks like a curved V, and this is the guy that people usually confuse with nu. So remember, upsilon looks like this, nu looks like this. Okay, now phi, capital phi looks like a standard deviation on a graph, um, but a small phi looks like a circle with a line through it. Now chi, capital chi just looks like an x, whereas a small chi looks like this. Um, you see this usually in chi-square testing um, in statistics. You might have encountered this there if you've ever taken a statistics class or a biology class. Um, capital Psi looks like the Hindu god Shivji's um, trident. It's a pretty cool symbol. Um, but this is what capital Psi looks like, and this is what small Psi looks like. This is also the symbol for the American Psychological Association and also the Canadian Pharmacological Association. Um, omega looks like a horseshoe. Um, pretty cool. Um, and small lowercase omega just looks like a W. Okay, so hopefully this helped. Um, you could also make uh, words now from these, um, like for example, um, this pi alpha tau, that's packed. Okay, so you just take the first letter of the word um, and that's how you pronounce it. I. So pi you take the first letter of pi, which is p, the, the first letter of alpha is a, the first letter of tau is t, so you can write pat in Greek. So now you can invent all sorts of fancy Greek words and confuse your roommates or the people you live with or your family or your friends.